Hi everyone, here at the Australian Arm Run Artillery Museum during Oz Armour Fest 2024 and we're taking a look today at their example of the Tiger One heavy tank. So this tank had a few different, uh, a few different names. Um, when it was launched it was the uh, Panzerkampfwagen 6H Ausfrog H1. Um, it was later renamed the Panzerkampfwagen Tiger Ausfrog E from March 1943, but I'll call it today the Panzer VI or the, um, or the Tiger One. Now, probably more has been written, said and sung about the Tiger One than, than any other tank ever, ever produced. Um, so I'll just try and hit some high points today and you can feel free to, to add anything you might know or love about this tank or hate about this tank, if you like, in the, uh, in the comments below. So the Tiger One was a heavy tank which was designed primarily to perform armoured breakthroughs. The idea was that uh, heavy tank units would be deployed into the front line, they would cause a breach in the, uh, in the enemy's uh, defences, and that that breakthrough would later be exploited by medium tanks, which were faster moving and more lightly armed and armoured. So for this type of vehicle, armour and firepower was the focus rather than, say for example, sustained high speed mobility. Now the concept of this, this heavy tank design um, was progressed by the German Army Weapons Agency, the um, Heerswaffen Armed, starting from about 1937, but were deprioritized in favor of focusing on the production of the medium tanks that were gonna be needed for the upcoming war. So um, as I mentioned in other videos, you didn't start to see uh, tanks like the Panzer III reaching um, volume production until 1939. So developing these heavier tanks took a, uh, took a back seat to other priorities. However, that development gained new urgency in May 1940 after the experience um, of the fighting in, in France and the very clear inability of the main German tank armament, the 3.7 centimeter Kampfwagen Kanone 36 um, L45 that was mounted on the uh, Panzer III and uh, tanks like the Panzer 38T, having the inability to deal with heavier French tanks like the Shah B1 Bis. Um, in a couple of different examples of engagements that happened during the Battle of France, a, a single French tank in the Ardennes was able to destroy 13 Panzer III's and IVs in the matter of a few minutes on the 16th of May 1940, as the German forces were trying to advance into France. Similarly, a detachment of British Matilda IIs and IIs overran regiments of the Erwin Rommel 7th Panzer Division, and they could only be halted with the direct fire of an 8.8 centimeter anti-aircraft gun and also 10.5 centimeter howitzers. Um, and so consequently, the German army had seen um, uh, through the Battle of France that they needed the ability to deploy heavier armored elements um, during, their, uh, during their advances. Now German industry was progressing the design of heavier tanks um, and uh, the firm Henschel, for example, had designed two prototypes, the VK3001 and VK3601, which were in the 30 ton and 36 ton class. Um, and these were, of course, much heavier than the Panzer III. Panzer III in the early days weighed about 20 tons. So we're talking about big upgrades here. Ferdinand Porsche was commissioned also to develop a heavy tank chassis prototype, and he ended up designing a tank that would be in the 45 ton class once the gun and turret had been uh, put on it. And uh, tank upgrades such as this were only possible once the German army included specifications for these heavy tanks to be able to ford rivers rather than rely on bridges because the weight sizes were getting way beyond the capability of European, uh, European bridges. So with the need to advance these designs um, faster, an expedient decision was taken to use Krupp's 8.8 centimeter Kampfwagen Kanona 36 L56 gun um, that was ready um, for use in line with production plans and competitive trials were undertaken between the Porsche chassis, which used a petrol electric drive, and Henschel's 45 ton chassis that had been upgraded based on its other prototypes and was powered by a conventional petrol engine. The Henschel design proved superior. It didn't have the disadvantages of needing huge amounts of copper that the Porsche system did, um, but Porsche's rejected hull design had already undergone sun limited production, and uh, those hulls would eventually be repurposed for use in, use in the Panzerjäger Tiger P or the Ferdinand slash Elephant uh, tank destroyer. So therefore, the final Tiger One design concept um, had been selected. It was a torsion bar suspension designed by Henschel with a turret and an 8.8 centimeter L56 gun designed by Krupp using a V12 engine uh, designed by uh, Maybach. And that first production chassis of that design concept was released in May 1942 for final testing. 
Now the tank was made up until August 1944 when it was replaced with the um, Tiger II in its entirety and incorporated various modifications along the way. In total about 1,347 units were produced with peak monthly deliveries of 90 to 100 units that was achieved in early 19, uh, 1944. So the hull um, which you see here, um, the rear of, was built by it was built by Henschel. The turret was mostly built by Weichmann. Um, both Henschel and Weichmann were in Kassel in uh, the south centre part of Germany. Um, though uh, Krupp themselves made about 40 turrets, and the gun itself was made by Krupp, while the engine and a lot of the drive line was made by uh, made by Maybach. Now coming around here to the side of the vehicle, we can get a good look at the chassis. So the chassis is torsion bar suspension, eight arms per side. The arms point forward on the left side of the vehicle and they point rearward on the right, which allows the road wheels to be mounted directly opposite each other, unlike torsion bar chassis like on the Russian KVs where the wheels on each side of the tank are offset. The road wheels are interleaved um, to reduce the ground pressure and um, this tank has the, uh, the later version road wheels which are used internal rubber um, uh, mounts to, uh, to dampen the load. Early types of road wheels which were used on the prototypes in earlier production were a dish type road wheel that were rubber lined but these suffered a lot of failures then that could eventually lead to suspension um, breakages. Um, so those upgraded steel uh, steel rimmed wheels which are on this example were introduced from February 1944. Uh, the tracks on the uh, tank are about 725 millimeters um, wide. Um, when the vehicle had to be shipped the outer road wheels needed to be removed and narrow tracks were fitted to be transported by train to ensure that they weren't too, uh, too wide for the uh, railway loading gauge. At the back of the vehicle you've got the, uh, the engine. The engine uh, in the initial production was a Maybach HL210 21 litre engine developing 480 kilowatts. This restricted its mobility being, being somewhat underpowered for the 56 tonne combat weight of the, uh, the final design. Um, so the more powerful Maybach HL230 TRM uh, 23 litre was introduced from May 1943 and this had about 520 uh, kilowatts. So the tank has um, an engine at the rear Drivers at the front via the sprocket, and so you've got a transmission shaft running forward to the uh, to the transmission and the final drive and steering system, and finally to the uh, to the drive sprocket. Now, when originally designing a, this heavy breakthrough tank, the, there had been a requirement that the main armament should be able to penetrate 140 millimeters of armor at a thousand meters range, and so consideration was given to a few different guns um, as the main armament. Firstly, Rheinmetall 7.5 centimeter Kampfwagen Kanona 42 was considered that um, had the capability, at least on paper, to, uh, to meet the requirements. And with smaller rounds, it would have been capable of um, carrying more ammunition than uh, the Tiger I eventually did. However, the gun ended up not being ready to support production. Similarly, the, uh, the longer 8.8 centimeter Kampfwagen Kanona 43 L71 was considered, but again, was not ready to support production. That gun went on to be mounted into the Tiger II that replaced this vehicle. So the gun that was ready was the 8.8 centimeter Kampfwagen Kanona 36 L56 that was based on the um, 88 um, FLAC 36 anti-aircraft gun. With the standard Panzer Granada 39 armor piercing ammunition that could get through 100 millimeters of armor at a thousand meters range. Um, with the rarer tungsten cord um, Panzer Granata 40 ammunition, it could get through 138 millimeters of armor at a thousand meters range. Um, that that gun had roughly four and a half times the kinetic energy of the best um, the best gun and round combination that the Panzer III ever mounted. So when we're talking about the capability of this vehicle and its gun, it was a real step up from the medium tanks that the German Army had used up until that point. In terms of protection, the tank was also a step up. Hull and turret fronts had about 100 millimeters of armor. The mantlet itself was 120 to 200 millimeters, depending on where you were measuring. Um, the upper, sul upper hull sides had 80 millimeters, and the turret sides and rear were also 80 millimeters. Um, the lower hull had 60 millimeters, but of course this was protected by the um, by the road wheels. Now it was first deployed in um, August of 1942 around Leningrad in the 502nd Heavy Tank Battalion, and it was used on the Eastern Front in North Africa, Italy, and in Western Europe. Now they were typically operated in heavy tank battalions which were supposed to be deployed to support these breakthroughs. In 1942 these, these heavy battalions consisted of 20 Tiger Ones and 16 Panzer III's to provide support and reconnaissance work. Later formations had a standard organisation of 45 Tiger tanks that were all organised into three companies of 14 Tigers each plus um, some command vehicles. But of course units would often field much smaller numbers of combat ready tanks later in the, um, later in the war. Originally designed of course to, um, to support offensive breakthroughs, late war realities meant that they were eventually used more in defensive postures 
um, to provide heavy fire support and to counter-attack enemy um, armoured breakthroughs. Um, from mid-1944, Henschel had begun making a replacement for this tank, the Tiger II, that mounted the even heavier 8.8cm Camp Wagon Canona 43 gun that I mentioned, uh, mentioned earlier. Now, when preparing this tank for, for restoration, the museum found a chassis number on one of the parts. That was 250771. I looked that up in one of the references by, uh, by the great Hilary Doyle, and that puts this whole construction in January 1944. And as a result, it's one of the later Tiger ones, so it sports a lot of examples of the, uh, the changes that were made during production, such as having the swivel hatch um, on top of a low profile commander's coppola as opposed to the earlier drum coppola. The track link um, spares are mounted on the side of the turret. It has these steel road wheels um, with internal rubber um, absorbers rather than having rubber lined uh, dish type road wheels. It's got no smoke discharges on the turret. Um, and it also has the, uh, the binocular Zeiss optic, which um, right towards the end of production was replaced with the monocular um, optic. So I want to thank you for getting to the end of the video and listening to me bang on about the, uh, the Tiger One. I appreciate you making it this far and for making the time to listen to me. So I look forward to talking to you soon about another armoured vehicle or artillery piece. And until then, I hope you stay well and thanks for listening.